Hey gang, Bronco Carl 92 here again. So uh, for this project today we're going to replace the speedometer sensor on a 1995 Dodge Ram 2500 with a Cummins turbo diesel. Okay, so this is another installation video brought to you by www.autopartswarehouse.com. Um, they've provided me with a uh, speedometer sensor, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to install uh, in just a few minutes. So, let me uh, show you the parts and uh, what we got to do. Okay, so the part we're going to install today is the uh, speedometer sensor. Uh, it's made by Standard Ignition. Okay, so basically the, uh, the package comes with a new sensor and it comes with a wiring pigtail, heat shrink, and heat shrink tubing. So I believe the reason why we have a new pigtail uh, is twofold. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the connections, they can get corroded um, and you'll have a bad connection. Um, but I also know that Chrysler um, used a different sensor um, in the later years and so uh, to make I guess parts uh, storing easy um, they've only used the updated part now so that's why you'd have to replace the pigtail that's the second reason so anyhow um, it's uh, basically held into the uh, transmission or transfer case with a um, 11 millimeter um, screw so uh, we'll just climb under there we'll pull that out and uh, we'll, uh, we'll show you what it's involved with uh, replacing this pigtail harness so let's get you set up Okay, so looking under the truck, here's our transfer case. Here's our output shaft. Um, and there is the sensor. So basically, it's a matter of uh, removing this bolt, popping the sensor out. Um, we're going to change this pigtail, so we'll probably just cut it instead of uh, unplugging it. And uh, I'll show you how to solder and heat shrink and uh, put the new sensor in. So let me get you set up. Okay, so going to remove this 11 millimeter bolt here. The sensor should just lift out that. Now we can open this up here this little lock tab and that will release this part and you can just pull the connector off and actually the pins look pretty clean on this thing so I want to cut this off yeah well the outside doesn't look that great so This has been taped, so what we can do is we can open up the tape on here. And pull off this. Wow, okay, this one was replaced at one point already, so. I we'll want to cut it off past the repair, so let's give that a cut. And uh, let me uh, go get the uh, connector and the heat shrink, and we'll uh, we'll start doing some splicing. Okay, for this stage of the repair, we're going to need a couple more items. Um, we'll need a pair of wire strippers, um, end cutters, some solder, electrical tape. Um, soldering iron, um, a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a, uh, a lighter. Um, and of course, here's our replacement pigtail and the heat shrink. So normally what I do when I'm going to make a, uh, a splice like this that involves a couple of wires, I like to stagger the wires like this. Um, and the reason that is is that um, when you put everything back together, the harness likes to, uh, to lay flatter uh, and nicer. It just makes for a neater job. So. 
So uh, let me get you set up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start splicing these wires up. Okay. So we have our, our pigtail here. I've uh, stripped off, I'd say, about a half inch of insulation on each wire. Uh, I've already stagger cut these wires here. Strip them. might want to use butt connectors here. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, butt connectors tend to uh, get wet, attract moisture, corrode, and um, if your speed signal is wacky, you know, you figured, oh well, yeah, it's just my speedometer is going to be a little messed up. Well, um, this input also uh, determines whether or not your overdrive and uh, torque converter are going to work properly because the transmission needs that uh, that road speed so uh, it's not a good idea to uh, to skimp here so basically once the wires are stripped you twist them together and I guess you can see I've already put the um, the heat shrink on the uh, on the wires here it's an important step not to, uh, to forget because otherwise after everything's soldered together you'll feel like a fool. Of course the nice thing is we just go color to color. Okay, so now we've got all three of our wires twisted together. We can take our soldering iron. You want to get your soldering iron hot. And I like to touch a little solder to the soldering iron. And then place it on the wire. As you heat it up, the solder gets nicely sucked into the wire. As you can see, we've got a nice clean solder job. Next we'll take our heat gun. And like I said, if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a a lighter or a match for this. And one at a time we'll just shrink. This is a nice heavy heat shrink tube they use on here. better the seal here, the more waterproof and the more lasting this repair will be. And that's it.
and you can just take your split loom and shove the wires back in. Finally, to make it look nice, I'll put a little electrical tape around it. Okay, so now all we have to do is just bolt our sensor back in and plug it in. Okay, so now we just take our new sensor. Just pops in place. Place the screw. Tighten. Take our connector. Push it in place. And engage our locking tab. And that's it. Alright, so there you go. So uh, check out www.autopartswarehouse.com for great parts at great prices. So. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you the next time. Take care, guys.